Pompeii. So thank you all for being on tonight. I see so many familiar faces. I know um, a lot of you are really new to the giftings or, and um, this idea of actually doing street ministry. So I'm really excited that you're on with us. Um, I want to introduce to you tonight some amazing men um, that have made an impact in my life. Um, Pastor Jacody Owens. He, we got Pastor Brian Carter. And then we've got Prophet James. Can you say, hey, Prophet James? So um, we're we're going over um, a couple of different points of view. I'm going to have, who's going first, Cody? You are. I'm going first. Okay. So I'm on first. So what I'm talking about is bringing someone through the gospel on the street, bringing them to saving sorry. faith. I'm what? sorry. I'm sorry. It's actually PB because he was going to talk about what is the gospel. I'm okay, sorry. that's what I thought. You're good. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Brian. You go for it, and yeah. um, and we'll, we're going to get into this. Okay, so uh, it's great. Listen, that everybody's doing well. Is everybody ready? Come on, y'all, give me the thumbs up. All, all, awesome. Amen to that. So I'm going to talk about what is the gospel, and hopefully I'm going to give you a clear and concise view. And I want to simplify it. Well, I'm going to just take you through a couple of scriptures, but I'm going to attempt to simplify it as much as possible so that when we're giving the gospel, we can actually simplify it to people and we can be pinpoint about exactly what the gospel is. Okay. So what is the gospel? Um, uh, Number one, uh, the gospel, gospel is not a religious word. I want to start by saying that. I got 10 minutes, but gospel is not a religious word. We've made it into a religious word, but it's not a religious, it's not a religious word. Um, uh, it is actually or was an adjective or a word spoken in King James days to describe uh, what we would call good news, Okay. So in other words, when anyone had to share good news about anything at that time, they were, they were saying that I'm going to give you the gospel or I'm going to share gospel uh, about a certain thing. So the word gospel actually is not a religious term. It's actually a word that was used in the King James time to describe something that was good news. Okay, so in other words, if someone, uh, if someone's uh, wife was having a baby, they instead of saying good news, the term that they would use that hey, <laughs> this is I want to share with you gospel about so and so's wife and the and the hearer would understand that it was good news. So the term gospel is not a religious term. It's simply meant to be relegated to someone's understanding that what they were about to hear was good news. So the term gospel means good news, okay? So it's, impo it's important to highlight that what you are giving to someone is the knowledge of good news, all right? I want to start by saying that it's important to highlight, all right, that what you're giving to someone is actually good news. Because if you don't understand that, your, your approach, your approach will never be from the most beneficial perspective. And instead of, and instead of just simply giving someone good news, we'll 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 in essence find ourselves trying to sell somebody something, and we're not selling Jesus. All right, does everybody understand? We're not selling Jesus. We're not selling them. We're not salesmen. We're just simply there to give someone the good news. So it's important to understand that when we're approaching someone, we're simply approaching them with good news. And if we understand that it's good news, that if gospel means good, good news, 
Well, it affects our disposition towards people because then we're able to we're able to function in the full assurance of faith in everything that we're doing. Why? Because what we're giving them is good news. All right. And so in Romans uh, 1, 16 and 17, and if you have your Bibles, you don't, you know, you can turn there. But if not, I'll just read it. I'm going to be very quick. Um, Romans 1, 16 and 17 says this, for I am not ashamed of the gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in this gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, for as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So what is the good news then concerning Jesus Christ if the gospel or the good news is about Jesus Christ? Well, what is the good news about Jesus Christ, okay? So the good news about Jesus Christ is this. It is the power that God makes available through Jesus to save you from your current condition. I'm going to state it again. What is the good news concerning Jesus Christ? It is the power that God makes available through Jesus Christ to save you from your current condition. Now, when I say save you, I'm not actually talking to you. Because you're all are born again. So when I say save you, it's understood that we are presenting this gospel to somebody. So when we're presenting the gospel to somebody and they want to know what it is, the gospel is the power that God makes available through Jesus Christ, because the gospel is about Jesus Christ. It is the power that God makes available through Jesus Christ to save you from your current condition. Now, we know that when we're talking about people that are not born again, that they are in a fallen condition. So when we talk about the gospel, it is the power that God makes available through Jesus Christ to save them from their current condition, okay? So it begs the question, what is man's current condition? Okay, you may feel the need to provide answers to that because most feel like they're okay. <laughs> they don't know that they need to be saved from something until you tell them that they have to be saved from their current condition. So it begs another question. What is their current condition? Their condition is that they're born apart from God. They need to know that they're born apart from God, that they're separated from God that the condition that they're in is apart from God. What's their current condition? Also, they are absent from his life. So number one, they're born apart from God, okay? Number two, they're absent from his life. Number three, they're fallen from his nature. One, they're born apart from God. Two, they're absent from his life. Three, they're fallen from his nature. Okay. How did they get there? Which is what they may want to know. <laughs> How did they become born apart from God? How did they become absent from his life? How are they falling from this nature? In other words, how did they get there? Okay, Romans, the fifth chapter. We're going to read uh, verses 12, uh, 12 through 15, and then verses 19. I'm going to be as quick as possible, okay? I understand I only have a little bit of time, but I want to get this as quick as possible. Is everyone okay so far? Okay, awesome. So Romans, uh, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 15, says this. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. 
For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the likeness of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. And we're also going to read uh, verse 19, but let's go to verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. And I'm going as fast as possible, but we're going to read 19 also, okay? Okay, so the question is, what does death mean? Okay, death passed upon all men. Death means separation from God, okay? So man was born separated from God. Death means separation from God. When God tells Adam, if you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die, he was actually not highlighting physical death. Physical death is a byproduct of being separated from God. Separation from God means death, and death means separation from God, okay? So man was born separated from God, and death means separation from God, okay? We were all born dead as a result of what Adam did. We were all born separated from God, but we can be born again, okay? We can be born again. Jesus says this. This is John 3. I don't want you to turn there. You know it. You know this. Jesus says, Jesus says, uh, no man can do what I do unless you are born again. So if you are born dead, then you must be born again, right? In order to be, re to, to be returned back to your original condition, all right? So because of Adam, we all died, but God made it fair, which it, talk which it talks about in Romans. Okay, because, at, because of Adam, we all died. We were all born dead, separated from God, but God made it fair so that in Christ, we could all live. So God looks at the condition of man and says, that's not fair what happened in Adam. So I'm gonna make it fair that you can all, listen, that just as you didn't earn death, you won't have to earn life. Come on, are we all understanding? Give me the thumbs up. God says it's not fair. That in Adam, you all die. So in Jesus, you'll all live, okay? So Christ restored us into what Adam lost, okay? Here we go, we're wrapping it up. What did Adam lose? Adam lost righteousness. Righteousness means right relationship with the Father, okay? It means right standing. In Romans 1 and 17, it says that in the gospel, okay, righteousness is revealed. Righteousness means right standing. In other words, in the gospel, we find out how to get back into right standing, right relationship with God in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Jesus restores what Adam lost, okay? Okay, so then what's the gospel? The good news is how God empowered you through Jesus to be restored into his original intent in your relationship and your nature, okay? We're wrapping it up. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, what? Might be saved, okay? So God restores you unto eternal life. But what does that have to do with relationship? In John 17 and three, we want you to write this down. This is why I'm going fast. Jesus says eternal life is to know him, okay? is to know God. So eternal life is not necessarily separation from hell. That's a byproduct of receiving eternal life. So, so we're not to really make the gospel about being rescued from hell. The gospel is about being returned into right relationship with the Father, okay? So Jesus said John in John 17 and three, eternal life 
is to know him. And Jesus restores you unto God so that you can know him, okay? So eternal life is to know the Father. And eternal life is a person that we exist in, Jesus Christ, because through him, we know the Father. So guys, if you have any questions, I know I may have gone, gone over, but I just felt the need to kind of run through that really quick. If you have any questions at this time, you, you can ask those questions. Okay. Good evening. My first question has to do with point number two. Okay. Is it absent from his life or L-I-G-H-T? Life. life. Absent from his life. Okay. Thanks. Because God is life. Okay. So what's death? Death, death, death. Death is the absence of life. That's actually the definition of death. There's no real definition for death, but the absence of life. Uh, Funny, when I was uh, in my HVAC uh, 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 classes, the first definition they teach you is what's cold, C-O-L-D-Y. -L -L and the definition is the absence of heat. So wherever <laughs> heat, heat is absent, there, it's going to be cold. It's a simple definition. So death is the absence of life. When Adam, when Adam sinned, he was separated from life. As a byproduct of being separated from life, uh, death happened, okay? Um, just as a short note, uh, Pastor Jacoby, you gave this example one time, and I just want to use that before we turn this over to our next speaker, just in case there are no more questions, okay? Death, death, sin was a, sin is a disease that infected everybody, okay? If, if someone, if someone is, uh, if a parent if a parent contracts AIDS, it's a byproduct that the child contracts what the parent had. Okay? Is it fair? No. Did 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 the did the child do any good or bad to deserve being condemned to death because of AIDS? No, but nevertheless, they have to live with it because what they contracted was a result of their forefathers, what they inherited, okay? So so likewise, sin and death, this, this is what happened. Because a question you might get is, well, why am I paying for something that my forefathers did, okay? Well, so likewise, you know, it happens, it happens the same way when someone contracts aid, but Jesus Christ is the cure. He's the answer. So, amen. At all with the questions. Anybody else have any more questions for Pastor Brian before we move on to Prophet Thompson? All right. Well, awesome. I don't see anybody's mic unmuting here, so we're going to keep it moving. So Prophet Thompson, he's going to come on. We're going to talk about the need for the gospel. Bless you, bless you. Bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, talking about the need for the gospel, the gospel um, is so needed because without the redemption, the redemption plan of the Lord Jesus Christ that he has for us, um, out hearing the gospel, knowing the gospel, there's no way of being converted or also um, there's no place where, sorry, sorry. Without the need of the need of the gospel is so important, and and when we a person gets saved and give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and they step into the reality, um, just like uh, Apostle was saying, I'm not just being avoided hell, but also being redeemed, everything being a store, coming back into alignment. So Jesus being the mediator, uh, John fourteen six, He is the way, the truth, and the life. And there's a void in every man and every woman that have not received Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can fill that void. He's the only one that can redeem you from sin, the one that heals. So the gospel has to be preached so people can be saved. Um, the reality is that even when we step out and go to minister, there are people that never heard the good news. They never heard it. They didn't even know that they realized they needed it until they hear it. They won't even know they need it until they hear it. And so it's a need to speak it. It's a need to preach it because many that... They know they're missing something. Their spirit man is crying out for the true and living God. Um, but they, they have to hear it because, uh, you know, faith comes by hearing. And so so the gospel needs to be heard so people can hear it and then bow their heart to it. Um, 
Jesus says this in uh, St. John 10 and 10, he said, I came that you may have life and life more abundantly. And that abundant life has nothing to do uh, with materialistic things. It's what money cannot buy. Galatians 5, 22, 23, love, peace, joy. He's taking you from darkness and bringing you into light, taking you from anxiety and bringing you to peace, taking you from sickness and bringing you to healing, taking you from confusion and bringing you to clarity. And so uh, when you hear the gospel and then you realize um, the need of the more, I really believe that the more they hear it, the more they need, they will learn that they need to hear it more and more and more because faith come by hearing and the more and more. Um, and even as we going out to, uh, we going out to, to minister, we come from a place of love and compassion because when we first heard the gospel of Jesus and we realized that we needed to be redeemed, we didn't know we was lost. It did something to us. The Holy Spirit, they, you, Jesus won you over. Everybody on this uh, on this Zoom been won over by Jesus through his love. For God so loved the world. The reason why you came because you realized there's a loving Savior that died for you uh, when you wasn't even thinking about him. The Bible said we were separated, all of us alienated in our minds. So we wasn't even thinking our heart. We didn't even know what love was until the Holy Spirit was shedding abroad our heart so we can now go in love. And so that experience you have with Jesus, knowing that he's the true and living God, that now out of love and compassion, when you see someone else out there that didn't know Jesus, just like you didn't know, you are ministering from that place of love and compassion. You'll see the need. Once God met your need, you will also see that there's needs um, um, that the others need to know uh, that Jesus is alive. He's real. Um, he's the true and living God. And I, I'm very radical uh, with my, there's no other, there's, every other God is false. Every other God is dead. I don't listen to anything. I'm not, I'm not even interested and in, I'm not even open to anything else, but Jesus, I'm fully, uh, fully, um, I'm fully sold out. And for those that's on, uh, you're here or you're fully full, uh, uh, sold out, you'll know how much stuff that's out there that's not God that you say, man, they need to hear the truth. And the truth makes you free. And so um, the gospel of Jesus Christ must be preached so people can come out of deception. They can be free. They can actually walk out um, as a child of God, walking out in the earth and doing what God has called to do. And he tells us to be a witness. He, in Mark 16 and 15, he said, preach, go out and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. So we are witnesses uh, uh, that Jesus, the goodness of God. So God want us to go as we experience the gospel and the breach, the gospel was preached to us. And we heard the gospel and we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. He became our Lord and Savior. And you know what he has done for you. Now we put to go out and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. it's, and, and, and what is motivating me to do that? My personal experience, my personal love for Jesus, my yeah. hunger for those that become hungry for Jesus is each and every one of you on here, your heart will burn for Jesus. It's not hard to talk about Jesus. If you really think about, when you see somebody say, I don't know what they're going to say. Well, if you don't say anything, nothing's going to happen. Come on. So your person, and it becomes personal. He's your personal Lord and Savior. That personal burning of fire as you're hearing it, even today, tonight, that fire is intensifying, it's increasing. You'll get excited about, I got to tell somebody. And because why? Because that personal experience that you had with Jesus, when you heard the gospel, you realized I needed it. And so there are so many that don't know they need it until they hear it, until they experience it, until they experience and they say, that's what I needed. I've seen it over and over where people have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, have an encounter with Jesus. And they say, that's what I've been missing. I knew it was something. And they've been like that for years. Um, but the, when you go out here and to this dying world, then people have their own philosophies, trying to make it on their own hoping in their own way, and Jesus is the answer. So what they've been searching for, what they've been seeking for, what they've been left in what been leaving them empty and void, Jesus is the only one to fill. And once you have that personal experience, you speak out of that, of your own, that own fire, your own, and you preach the gospel with that. And um, so it's definitely a, a need. Uh, what We're definitely in the area that where we are, and just all over the world, uh, the harvest of labels and uh, the, uh, the harvest is plentiful, but the labels are few. And um, we are in an hour where we must take action. We are in an hour. We in that we sort of move like the book of Acts, going house to house, place to place, preaching, winning souls, and having these meetings here. And people are growing. And this go and this this start to as the gospel is preaching the, the need of the gospel. Once people realize the more of the need, then they must know there's a demand for the kingdom. There's a demand for the gospel in your neighborhood, in your city, in your country, in your wherever the case may be. And once you realize that, what are you going to do about it?
What are you not not praying for somebody else to come? What are you going to do about the gospel? The need of the gospel need to be heard. What are you going to do about it? You're going to tell somebody about Jesus. You're going to lay hands on somebody and they're going to get ill. They're going to express Jesus to the power of God. And then they see the, the, the gospel being demonstrated. Even that city and the region will realize there's a need. They will start saying, we need more of that. We need y'all mm -hmm. to come back. We need y'all to come here. What just happened last week? We never experienced that before. We want that. You said, what was that? That was Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. So um, I, I'm going to leave it off with there, but... Um, there's a there's a need and it, and there's a demand for each and every person on here that as we learn and even as we grow we step out and we tell somebody who's about to commit suicide that Jesus loved them yeah. and that he died for them and he cares for them and he sees them and he knows everything about them, and the hair the very hairs on the number head on the, on their head is number he knows them and they hear that and they they encounter the love of Jesus through the power of the gospel of the good news and they'll realize there's someone that's greater than me, greater than no, that cares about me in this way, and they have something to live for. Yeah. First of all, you start to get purpose. So I believe as they even hear the gospel, the need of the gospel, you'll find purpose. People are hurting because they don't know their purpose. Once you realize the purpose, you say, man, there's a need to hear the gospel because the gospel will tell us why we are even here, how everything came to be. How is this and that? These questions start to get answered. And the more we learn, the more we, the, the reality is the more we don't, the more we know, we start to learn, the more we realize what we don't know. And it keeps going, but it's a treasure. And each and every one of you on here, you carry something very uniquely that will be able to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to that person who never heard it, or that person maybe that went to church once in a while, but never encountered Jesus, or no one ever stopped them to say, are you saved? You know? You are that you are the solution. The Holy Spirit in you is the solution to the problem in your city, in your nation, in your neighborhood, in your family, on your job. So it's time for you to it's time for you to uh it's time for you to minister gospel. Uh, it's time for you to be a witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe the more you do it, the more you're gonna realize there's a greater need, there's a more of a need for you to keep doing it. And that's my part there. Amen. So, so, you want to minister right now, <laughs> Pastor Jacoby? Everybody that's on here right now, raise your right hand up in the air. Just raise your right hand. Raise your right hand up in the air. Uh, I just felt impressed upon my spirit while Prophet James was speaking. Keep your right hands up in the air. While your right hand is up in the air, God said He just told me that He's going to drop this down in your spirit while the Prophet was speaking. He said, he's going to drop something down in your heart. And I'm going to want you to repeat after me. Because when God drops this down in your heart, thank you, Lord Jesus. This is amazing. When God drops this down in your heart, it's going to stoke a fire in you that's never unlike it's ever been stoked before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So everybody keep your right hand up with me. While your mics are muted, I want you to say with me this. Jesus is the door. Say it right now. Jesus is the only door. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God wanted you, oh, glory to your name, Lord Jesus. God wanted you to be fully convinced tonight According to what prophet said, that Jesus is the door. He ain't one of many doors. He is the door. And with that, you, you're going to, yes, Lord Jesus, I see it right now. It's dropping down in your hearts. He's the door. You can't, you can't share your testimony in the full assurance of faith without knowing that he's the door. Say it with me again. Jesus is the door. Yes, Lord Jesus. Pastor Jacoby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, amen, amen, amen. Um, does anybody have any questions before we move on to Sister Mary Beth? Does anybody have any questions as far as for anything that uh, Prophet James spoke about? Yeah, I got a question. 
<laughs> All righty. So um, in talking about that void, how do people describe that void that needs Jesus? He's unmuting his mic now. Then my the second part is when you go out, do you just talk to everyone or how do you know who to interact with? Do you need to swipe your screen over, brother? There you go. Oh, now I can't hear him. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yep. Yeah. I heard your question. Awesome question. You said, um, could you repeat that first part for me again? I was messing around. Yeah. I, I no worries. So the first one was how, when you're out ministering, doing street ministry, how do people describe that void? And then when you're out ministering, how do you know who to talk to? You just talk to everyone or how do you? All right. Uh, so the, to the first for that first part, uh, that a question. Most people describe is and it, they can't really, but the mo the best way they can describe that void, lack of fulfillment. Jesus fulfills something is not completed. Jesus completes. When you have Jesus, you content. You did it, and they say they don't know what it is, but they know they, they'll try to explain this this void. And we know as as we will see because we are complete. Everything is not for us. It doesn't not matter what the bank account look like and all that we're going. But when it comes down, God has restored the joy of our salvation. We are complete and full in him, knowing that's why we can walk in joy. Joy is, uh, I like to call it supernatural excitement, a happiness and based on circumstance. So you can have joy. Joy comes from the throne room of God. It's, it gives you strength. So most people, they're living off that, that lack of fulfillment, the lack of that void based on happiness. So when things is going right, they're happy. When things are not going around, they can feel with us. But for us as believers, as we are walking, we are full and complete in the joy of the Lord. So even in the valley or even when things is going up, we still got this celebration in us. We saved. I tell myself each and every day, if something going on, guess what? My name written in the Lamb of Book of Life. I start having a Holy Ghost party in my bedroom. Uh huh. Because my name is, you see what I'm saying? You know, I feel God right there. It was so... Uh, that, the best way to describe your um, to answer your question is a lack of fulfillment, something missing that makes it all hold together and go. But they don't know that. We know that because it's in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory, the kingdom of God is in us. We have that answer. And so we present it to them. The second part of the question, um, who do we talk to? Well, like, you know, we're coming up June 1st. We talk to everybody that's walking across our path, right? Um, we We on fire for the Lord and the more we get on fire and the more we the more we hear the gospel for us personally the more we hear the more we are fully persuaded it be love will draw you you don't have to hear an audible voice oh that's great you don't have to your love if I'm saying you become conscious of is that person saved that person just walked walk past you do they know Jesus and You'll get to a place of reality. It's not by coincidence they walk past me and I'm about to preach to do they know Jesus? And so, yeah, at times God by the gift can the Lord can lead you to certain, but but there are times where you'll know the love of the love of Christ will draw you. Um, you will be drawn by the love of Christ. And sometimes I don't hear, I don't feel, I won't get, I won't feel goosebumps, I won't hear all these things. If I look over and I see a person, and we it's not a cliche, what would Jesus do? If, if the Lord told me, I don't, God don't have to tell me, go talk to her and tell her that I love her. I just go up and tell her that Jesus loves you. Wow. Because the love of Christ will draw you. You, you won't have to always have, the uh, best way I'm trying to say, you won't always have to have something really spectacular to happen for you just to do what Jesus said to do. The love of God in you will start to burn and you'll start telling, you'll start telling people about Jesus, even some of them that want to hear it. You tell them, but they need, they need to hear it. So you still tell them anyway, because you might be the one that God used to plant the seed. They might walk out your face and say, forget this, I don't believe you. And then two days later, somebody else come and say the same thing you said, and they break down, but it was the first time you sold it. So regardless, regardless of their response, our response is Jesus to them. So I think uh, for you, my dear sister, whoever you see, whoever the Lord showed you, whatever the case may be, and there'll be days when you're not in a group setting and you're just going to Walmart or you're going to Target, 
And the conversation, this happens with me all the time, a small conversation spark up. And guess what? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. When I'm in front of somebody, eventually, I'm going to say something about Jesus. I'm going to say something about God. I say, and they do that. And then by the time we talking, they're giving their life to the Lord Jesus. That's just me. God uses, God can use you in a different way. But I'm saying to you, uh, my dear sister, you know, but let the Lord, the, the love of God will draw you. You will just start talking to people. You're so you're burning so much for Jesus. You got to tell somebody. Who do I tell? I tell anybody who's who's ever who's available. I tell my coworker. I tell my mom. I tell my cousin. I tell my dad. I tell my supervisor. He might say, "Do we should do that?" Yeah, I'm seeing it. Amen. So, conversations. Any more questions from anybody before we move on to Sister Mary Beth? All right, sis, got okay. the floor. Oh, there was a comment in the chat. Oh. May I add? Rachel said, may I add? Only questions. We're only taking questions, uh, Rachel. <clears> okay. <throat> hey. so. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to give you first 10 reasons why we should share the gospel. <clears throat> first, we have been commanded to do so. We've been commanded to preach the gospel to all creation. Jesus said, go into world, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15. We need no other reason. Um, two, hell exists. Jesus said, but I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. He says, yes, I say to you, fear him. If hell didn't exist, we would have a legitimate excuse for passivity, but we have God's word to tell us what awaits guilty sinners. That's, it, it's huge. That's the, one of the biggest things. We should love every single person we pass so much that we cannot handle the thought of them going to that place. Three, we strive to love our neighbor as much as we love ourselves. Uh, so Jude 22, 23, and some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. So he's saying like in, in Jude, he's saying some are just barely escaping the fire and we are those that can pull them out. We don't know if the people that we are passing, we don't know what's going on in their lives. You stopping that person can be the difference between life and death for all eternity. And that is a powerful thought to keep in your mind when we are out on the streets. When you think, oh, I, I don't want to talk to that person. I want, I'm telling you, I've been so shocked at the people that I almost pass by and what they're going through and how just a touch, a word from God can change everything from for them and, and literally save them from the, the hell that they're living in right here. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Number four, obedience is evidence of salvation. Okay. So take that in guys, take that in. Our, all of us want to be obedient to the word. It's easy when you're sitting in church and sitting in the pew and raising hallelujah. But when you got to actually go and do what the gospel says to do, that's when you start sweating. That's when you start getting nervous. I don't know if I want to go talk to somebody. You will see how much you really are obedient when you start hitting the streets and talking to people you do not know. It will test your faith. It will, it will, it will test your mind and your heart. But it really is all about obedience. So the Bible says that Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to those who obey him. Hebrews 5, 9. We are not saved by our obedience. We are obedient because we are saved. Jesus said, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Okay. I, I know this, is, this can be tough. But I'm so excited that all of us are on this call tonight because it means that all of you guys are ready to step out in some way, shape, or form and do the call that is that we've all been called to. Five, to remain in silence is sin. As soon as the Holy Spirit was given, the apostles began to preach the gospel. God had granted everlasting life to dying humanity. 
They could not stay in the upper room because God's love provoked them to reach out to the lost. To him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. James 4, 17. Okay, I really, I, I want this to pierce your conscience. This is something that we must be doing. Okay, six, evangelism deepens our walk with God. Nothing teaches a fisherman like fishing. Interacting with the lost results in greater confidence and faith in God. Hearing of our the love that God has had for us, hearing the testimonies that God has done for us, and then sharing that with others deepens it because we actually will start to express through the giftings he's given us, um, just the love and the interaction that the father will use through us. It will deepen your love for him in a way like that you wouldn't know. And then even the people you'll encounter, you know, in, in our own flesh, we probably wouldn't interact with different people because of just the way we've been brought up our prejudices, different things like that. But when the, the power of God comes over you and you like, Prophet James was saying, and that compassion, that love hits you. And then you can feel the love as you're talking to somebody that you don't know. There's nothing more amazing. And, and then you really just see, wow, he just loves every single person with a heartbeat, with a breath, no matter how lost they are. It's the most beautiful thing to feel the love of the father come through you. It's the most beautiful thing. <clears throat> Okay, so seven, it causes us to search the scriptures. Wanting to know how to answer every man will send us into God's word, <laughs> okay? Because you are going to encounter every type of doctrine. You're going to, I mean, we're when we come together on June 1st, we're in a heavily Catholic um, Christian area, but you'll hear every type of doctrine that's out there. You're going to encounter people that don't believe. You're going to encounter witchcraft. You're going to encounter all types of things that you probably have not encountered. Um, you're going to encounter atheists. It's going to make you go deeper because you're going to realize I, I'm commanded to give an answer. And you're going to want to be able to grow in that and grow in your knowledge of God and how he is presented in his word to be able to share that with the people on the streets accurately. Okay. So it does say in 2 Timothy 2.15, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay. And eight, it deepens our gratitude for the cross. As we continually preach the cross, it will deepen our understanding of what God did for us on the cross. We will find ourselves practicing what we preach, so we will frequently be thinking about the cross. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 2, I determined not to know anything among you except Christ and him crucified. Okay, it really will. You will see, again, that compassion that will flow through you into others you will see truly what he died for. You will see the redemption of souls. You will see lives changed and you'll just see the power of the cross and his resurrection like you've never seen. Nine, it deepens our prayer life. <clears throat> we reveal our love for the lost by pondering their fate. And as a result, we cannot help but cry out to God for them. It says Romans 10:1. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. So you will start finding yourself praying. You'll you'll pray. I'm sure on June 1st, there's going to be jitters. There's going to be a little bit of anxiety. But on your way there, I bet you every single one of you is going to be praying, asking God, what, what are you going to do today? And then afterwards, you are going to be just shouting from the rooftops his praise for what we are going to see. I am believing we are going to see mass miracles on June 1st baptisms. I'm believing for everything on June 1st. I, I cannot wait. Okay. 10. We have been commanded to Im um, imitate Paul. Paul showed his love for God and for sinners by obedience to God's commission. It says in 1 Corinthians 10, 33, 11, and one, it says, I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. 
Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Paul gave his life to preach. He was stoned for preaching. He was shipwrecked for preaching. He was, I mean, you name it, Paul went through it. I mean, really, it's not going to be as hard as what Paul had to go through for us to share the gospel on June 1st. Okay, it's going to be nothing, but we're supposed to imitate Christ just like Paul did. And that is preaching the gospel, preaching the word. Okay, so that's my spiel. Does anybody have questions on that? Wanda, Wanda, Wanda. <laughs> Uh, point number 10. What was your scripture for point 10? Uh, point, point number 10 is 1 Corinthians 10, 33 through chapter 11, verse 1. Yeah. And I, I wanted to ask you guys too, how many of you have actually brought someone to saving faith? Have been able to lead someone through sin and then get saved? Okay, see one, two, three. See Becky's got her little hand up, four. Okay, there's. I can't see everybody in this group. <coughs> okay, good, we got, we got five. <coughs> and there's no condemnation in here if you haven't. But I hope after what I just presented that you feel that you, this is something that I need to be able to do, okay? Hey Wanda, did you have another question? No, I just remembered I did lead someone. Oh, amen, amen. Mostly, mostly kids, so yeah. yeah. Hey, it, it's all good in the kingdom. It's all good. Yeah. And not all of us are evangelists, but all of us should be able to do this. We should be able to share the gospel in a very simple, understanding way and be able to lead them to Christ. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. All right, Pastor Jacody, I think we're good. All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, we're going to talk about sharing the gospel with your testimony, all right? Sometimes we're out in the street, and you really just can't walk up on somebody and expect them to have the amount of love and care for the word of God that you do. So going to a stranger and quoting scripture verbatim, it, it can work, but then sometimes it's like, well, they have no reverence for that. So with the idea of you being a living epistle, this is where your testimony comes in. All right. And and so Sister Mary Beth, she didn't know that I was going to go here with Paul, but she ended off on Paul. So we're going to pick up on Paul because Paul in Acts, um, it's Acts 26, 6 through 28. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to jump around. He's standing before King Agrippa. And what does he do? He shares his testimony along with the gospel. All right, let's all start at verse six. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. And I'm gonna jump down to 12. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which sojourned with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why per persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of the things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. And I'm going to jump down to 20. Uh, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. And finally, the end result of what Paul is talking about here, it, it tugged on uh, Agrippa's heart because then he says, then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. But what was Paul, what did Paul do? He didn't, didn't come and just preach uh, uh, the scrolls, right? Because there was no no uh, New Testament in this time. He didn't come to preach the scrolls. He came and preached Jesus, but he also incorporated what it is, his encounter with Jesus. He incorporated what it is that Jesus has done uh, for him or his encounter with Jesus and coupled it with 
the need to repent. All right. And so knowing what God has done for you is going to be important when you go out on the streets. because Everybody on here has a testimony. Your testimony is not mine and my testimony is not yours, but your testimony is valuable. So before, because some people will say, man, uh, they'll hear somebody else's testimony. Dang, I ain't got a testimony like that. It don't matter. Your testimony is your testimony. Your encounter with God is your encounter with God. Somebody might not, my testimony might not touch somebody. Your testimony might. My testimony might be smaller and, it, and, and somebody and somebody's able to identify more with a smaller testimony who hasn't done nothing crazy than your testimony who's done something crazy, right? So don't devalue the ability to share your testimony to share uh, to, 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 as it incorporates with sharing the gospel. We go to 1 Peter 3.15 and we're talking about knowing what God has done for you says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. The reason is your testimony. What has God done for you? What has he brought you out of? For me, it's always the goodness of God that led me to repentance the goodness of God, when I had all of this stuff that should have happened to me, and it didn't happen, God had mercy on me. That led me to repentance. So knowing what it is that God has done for you, because again, when we go to share the gospel, don't we're not looking at people like numbers. Oh, I shared the gospel with five people. If you share the gospel with one person and you have a two-hour conversation about the things of God with one person, that is a powerful day. And so what? Somebody else got, I shared the gospel with 10 people. Awesome, right? But if you share with one person and you spent the time talking and, and having fruitful conversation about the things of God with that one person, it's powerful. So in these times where we're having these conversations, don't be afraid to share your testimony, all right? The testimony prepares the heart and the mind of the hearer. And that's the last scripture I'm going to read. Mark 5, 18 through 20. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed, prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord have done for thee and have had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Your testimony is powerful when it's shared to God because your testimony is not about you. It's about what God has done for you. I don't want to talk about myself. We ain't talking about you. We're talking about what God has done for you, what God has brought you out of. Not, oh, look, I'm doing this and I have all these. What God has done for you, what God has brought you out of. You are a living epistle. So just be, be mindful of this when you're out sharing the gospel. You're talking about Jesus. You're talking about the good news. You're talking about the need and all of these things. But when you're sharing that testimony, it makes you a more relatable person. It makes you a person. You're relatable. Man, you, I, I might not have listened to somebody else who's standing on a mic and just shouting at me. But look, man, look, I used to do this. I understand where you are right now. I used to do this. I used to do that. Look, this is what God did for me. And so when God, when so when you're talking to the person and and as you're, and you explained your testimony, it might be, man, you got this guy here that has these felonies who's telling me about Jesus. What changed his heart about what he was doing? You have this multimillionaire out here on the street telling me about Jesus or or this successful business person out here on the street telling me about Jesus. What's the motivation for that? It gives you something to think about. You're living a pistols, family. All right? And I'm going to end it there. So with that, who has any questions about sharing your testimony as it relates as we're, we're out sharing the gospel? Christina, is your hand up to ask a question? Yeah, I just wanted that. Uh, you said First Timothy, what? Oh, let me pull it back up. 
Uh, I, I put, uh, it was First Peter 3.15. First Peter three fifteen. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Dang, I couldn't even get a question from Wanda. <laughs> Everybody with me. <laughs> no, it's all good. You definitely gave me a point I could relate to, though. Okay, awesome. All right, well, family, if there's no questions, we don't need to, to bleed a question system right back. Floor's back yours. Okay, sure. Is anybody, I mean, we're we're gonna come back together again next Friday at seven to let everybody know. Um, Cody, what do you think um, that format will be? Is that gonna be more open for questions? What, what are we teaching next week? Uh, next week, we're actually gonna be going over, I'm gonna pull it back up. Next week, we're gonna talk about um, the person of Christ as you're out on the streets and you're sharing the gospel and presenting the person of Christ, uh, presenting the love of God uh, through the prayer and deliverance, uh, presenting Christ through prophecy and presenting Christ through healing and laying on of hands. Amen. So, Amen. Okay. And um, for those of you that are in my groups and things, I'll keep posting those videos about street ministry to get you guys, you know, thinking on how to share just some examples yeah. Um, but you know, if you guys have questions too, from tonight that you're like, I don't want to answer, post them in the group. I'll send them out to, to all of these men and we'll get back with you too. So I just want everyone to, to be able to feel like they're equipped. Um, so I guess, Cody, do you want to just end us in prayer? And, uh, so, so uh, I also wanted to reassure everybody's hearts too, that everything that we're doing Tonight, you're just learning everything that's kind of foundational. And I want to reassure everybody that what we're doing is very systematic, okay? And so when you come back next week, we're going to build upon this foundation. So everything that you're you're learning, with, next week when you come back, we're going to talk about more practicality. What, what does it look like to function in Christ? Uh, we're we're, we're going to talk about uh, more practical things and uh, to get you ready. So we 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 wanted to re uh, reassure you of that. And um, so yeah, amen. Yeah. Can you how many years, uh, Pastor Brian and Cody, um, and, and is James still on? I'm not sure if he is. But how many years have you guys been doing street ministry for the people that don't know you? Uh, so I would um, man, I would. Whew. Lord Jesus, um, probably consistently, consistently for about seven to eight years now, but I've been in ministry for 20 something years. It was kind of on, 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 on and off, but consistently for the past seven to eight years. Yeah. Yeah. Consistently has been since I'm 21 now, maybe about nine to 10 years consistently. Yeah. 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 Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. And you guys have seen it all on the streets. I did have a question come up today, so I am going to ask it. Um, people, are, you know, what about security on the streets and with kids, uh, things like that? Have, have you kind of like, how do you, how do you manage tough situations that might get a little sticky? Um, or, or have you seen those and there's no fear? How's God kind of presented, you know, helped well, you with that? With, with me, um, I've taken my kids out with me to some very, what people would call dangerous and unsavory neighborhoods. And they were stroller size, right? But my deal is I trust God to keep me, protect me and everything. And I look, I understand persecution and all of that, right? But I trust God to keep me, protect me and protect those that I'm with, all right? So, and, and look, listen, if you have the faith that God is going to protect you, he's going to protect you. If you if you're trusting God is going to protect you, He's going to protect you. If you're trusting that when you go out there, you're going to be persecuted, don't be surprised that if that's the all that's the only reaction you get, right? And look, I, and I, Jesus said persecution will come, right? But they weren't. Jesus wasn't, and, and as He was moving moving out, people weren't just putting their hands on Jesus every time, anytime they wanted to. Only time they got to Jesus is when he decided, now's my time, I go lay my life down. That's the only time. Bob, but brother, we got all the apostles. They were crucified, they were tortured and all of this. They Jesus is our benchmark family. 
my my benchmark, I look at how Jesus moved. They did not beat him, stone him, or cru they didn't crucify him till they said, all right, now I go. Other than that, they didn't lay a finger on him. And out of the 10, 9, 10 years I've been out, nobody's ever laid a finger on him. True. Not one time. And can I add, can, can y'all hear me? Come on, brother. And then okay. when it... Okay, there you go. We step out and as we go out, um, as we go out, um, we look out for one another regardless. Your discernment is on. Like, um, we as we out there, and I, I don't know why I would use Brother Keith as an example. I just, you see, but like, if I saw somebody approaching him, it's my job to stand in front of Brother Keith and like, hey, dude, what's up, brother? Absolutely. To the guy that's coming up, why? Because we we are family. We do look out for one another. You know what I mean? Um, um, I've seen now in the streets, um, and I, I I didn't realize that I, I um I've been doing it roughly eight nine years too, roughly around there too, and just, just hands on. And I've been by myself. I never really had groups. Really, honestly, and which is a beautiful thing. When you do it as a group and you got twos, and we, that's beautiful. I never got that. I literally, I literally trenches just me <laughs> a lot of times too because I was just on the move. I was so far on fire for Jesus. I just talked and um, I've seen some things happen that was like, um, um, that made scare some people. But then as, as I, my confidence in God's faithfulness, my, the authority that I have is greater than the demonic power, no matter what the what the person was doing. And so, you'll get there to a place where we all there working together and moving together. That's that's something that um, that's something that you won't really have to worry. You, you and I just, I just throw it out there, not to for a scare tactic. You might get somebody yell a little bit. Somebody might call you a, a name. But then when you look at them, and when you when that person look when you that person call you a name or call you out or go off, when you look at them, they not that person. They are different, and that's a whole other thing. But you will deal with that. So sometimes I might say "shut up" in Jesus' name, and they literally shut up. But it's not the person I'm talking to. Uh, all right. You're breaking up, Prophet. We can't hear you. How about now? All right. All right. Greater, uh, and I said as I move on, greater is he that's in you than he who's in the world. You believe that wholeheartedly. And let me tell you, if you believe that wholeheartedly, what's out there is going to be more scared of you than you being scared of that. I promise you that. Amen. Amen. So don't be afraid. And as all of us out there, don't don't be don't be afraid. Matter of fact, just to ease somebody conscious today, um, um, I'm actually connected to the police station. It's right where we're going to be at is across from the police station, literally right down the street. And I know some. So for some of you that might feel a little bit, we all right, but we good. Go out there and let God use you. Amen. I'm out the way. <laughs> Did that answer your question that you had, Mary Beth, or was there one more associated with that? No, I, I think that's it. Um, but I'll let you guys know. I'll like we'll take some questions and stuff, and I'll let you guys know if any more arise for next week. So I think that's good. Awesome. All right. So Heavenly Father, we thank you just for all of us being able to gather together here, Lord. We thank you that where two or three are gathered, you are in the midst, Lord. You you live inside of us and you're in the midst of us all, Father. So we thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for what is coming down to St. Mary's County. You are coming to, you live there and you're coming to St. Mary's County in a powerful way that your, your glory will be known to the people, that people will be saved, set free, healed, delivered, all of the above, Father, we thank you. Father, even now for any of us that may be encouraging, uh, experiencing a little fear, we you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. When doubt arises, Lord, you have given us power, love, and a sound mind. And Father, as we go forth, as Galatians 3.20 says, the, the, the life we now live, we live by the faith, not in the Son of God, but of the Son of God who has made his habitation inside of us. So in Jesus' name, everybody be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you guys so much. I hope everyone was blessed by this tonight.
get your questions in um, so we're prepared for next week and I'll see you all later. So, so before we all actually sign out, I believe that my daughter actually reached out to maybe someone on here that I don't know their name. So if they're in here that uh, she was saying that um, the person may come on, but they had a condition with their throat. And I just wanted to make sure that we prayed for this individual before we actually got off the air. So if that's you, if you know what we're referenced to. We want you to make yourself known and we'll pray and God will heal. Amen. Amen. All right, who's dealing with that throat condition? Come on and talk to us. Don't be shy. We love you. Well, two of my children have, have one, one of them has a really high fever and really sore throats for both of them. One of them had to stay home and one that was not able to go camping this weekend. So I'm just believing that he will be able for me to go tomorrow. They're just both really sad that they're missing out. But if you guys can pray for that, their throats are super sore. <laughs> right. are, they, are they home with you right now? They are home, yes. Okay. Um, can uh, We don't want to make this this long. So can you go get them real quick? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Go get them babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, give me a second. I, uh -huh, go they're, get them. they're watching a movie while I, uh, while I was in the training. So give Second. Well, I tell you what, take the phone to them while they're watching the movie. They don't need to get it. Yeah, yeah. I'm right here. I'm right here. They can hear you. Okay, put your hand on both of their throats. Just while they're watching the movie. They don't even need to know what you're doing. We're just gonna pray for you. Okay. All right. All right. I need okay, so while they're watching the movie, let your hand stay there. Power of God is gonna begin to move through their throats. Why you got your hand on them? You don't need to say anything at the moment. Okay. All right. So let me ask you, why you have your hand on their throats? Do uh when they swallow, they can they can they feel a pain? Yes. Okay. Once All right. So 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 just leave your hands there. Um and yeah, thank you, Lord. Just leave your hands there. Leave your hands there. And I want you to repeat after me. Say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All pain go. All pain go. All signs of infection. All signs of infection. Tenderness. Tenderness. Leave now. Leave now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Say, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. For complete freedom. For complete freedom. Salvation. Salvation. Over my children. Over my children. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now. Thank you so much. So, so, so while we're, while they're while, while they're right there, mm -hmm. ask them, ask them to swallow and then ask them, do they feel any pain? Swallow, buddy. Really? They don't feel any pain? <laughs> <laughs> so the one that had trouble swallowing, he he doesn't have any pain anymore. Okay. <laughs> Enough said, meeting is over. Let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> so God just wanted to give y'all a preview, okay, of what he's going to use you all to do, okay? We wanted to keep that simple, and he wanted to show you all tonight just in simplicity, okay? This is not a coincidence. You heard, I don't, you heard someone who I don't know. We just simply walked her through it, okay, through the faith of Jesus, and Christ was revealed. So, good night, you all. Jesus loves you. <laughs> Thank you.